it took 20 years for Melee to reach this set. Cloud9 Mango vs Golden Guardian Zane at Smash Summit 11. A set that is already widely regarded as one of the most climactic, impressive, and influential Melee sets of all time, right up there with the likes of Genesis 1. Mango, Mango, Mango. Oh! EVO 2016. And Super Smash Con 2018. What is most surprising to me, as someone who has been in the scene since 2013, is that you would think that Melee story would begin to become stagnant over time, but it's been quite the opposite. I find the game much more intriguing as a spectator now. To me, this signifies the beauty of Melee's longevity. The fact that it took 20 entire years for Melee to have one of its greatest sets of all time is an achievement not many other games could accomplish. For example, Brawl's greatest sets are far behind in time, and what are the odds Street Fighter V will have one of its greatest sets in history played in 2036? I would say, unlikely at best. Melee is a game that moves forward through time because of its stories and its players. Out of 20 years full of stories, Smash Summit 11 was the culmination of so many storylines in the Melee timeline that it might as well be considered the Infinity War of the MCU, the Melee Cinematic Universe. Before Summit 11, the Melee scene was full of questions that were begging for answers. To start off, people were split on who the number one player in the world was. Mango? Or Zane? Secondly, with HBox's online results being inconsistent, there was a ton of speculation that he would come back to in-person events and dominate, just as he did back before the pandemic. Another issue that was up for debate was the whole Marth Fox matchup debacle, which many speculated is 60-40, but honestly it's still up in the air right now, nobody really knows. Last but not least, people wondered who on earth Nick Yingling is, and what is he doing at Summit? Jokes aside though, many tournaments stand out in terms of their place in the melee story. Some even go down in history. Of these tournaments that go down in history, one stands above the rest as the single greatest story in Melee history. Melee is a game that is no stranger to beating the odds. For everything the game has going against it, Melee's success has got to be one of the most improbable runs in esports history. I'm serious. Melee is such a lucky game that I wouldn't be surprised if it could win the Squid Games. Let's recap. Melee is a 20 year old game. Most people find this a bit of a turnoff right off the bat, especially considering there's three Smash entries that have come after Melee. Each one having better graphics, more characters, stages, more... well, everything really. To add insult to injury, the game has had no support from Nintendo. In fact, Nintendo has gone out of their way to kill Melee and competitive Smash as a whole. The only thing keeping this game alive is honestly just how goddamn fun it is. I've spent thousands of hours playing this game and it should be entirely obvious by now that I enjoy it a lot. So much so that I'd probably say it's the most fun game I've ever played. With this in mind, the COVID-19 pandemic was a massive roadblock for Melee. In-person tournaments would be impossible for the foreseeable future, which could have threatened the health of the game. Tournaments would have to be held online, which offered its own set of issues. Before 2020, Melee actually was able to be played online, but it utilized a delay-based netcode on a site called Anther's Ladder. If you play fighting games, you know rollback netcodes are more reliable and stable than delay-based netcodes. Anther's Ladder could be enjoyed for friendlies, sure, but for tournaments with money on the line, any bit of inconsistency can lead to issues with the results. By some absolute miracle, the melee scene was given the most important second wind it could have received. Four months into the pandemic in July of 2020, Fizzy and his team released a mod called Slippy. With the Slippy mod, you can play smooth rollback melee with a few simple clicks, literally in 57 seconds. You can either play unranked or directly connect with anyone you want to play against. This was good for players at every single level of the game. For the pros, this meant that tournaments could continue even during the pandemic, which is good for their sake and for maintaining spectatorship. On the low and mid level, 
This meant that the average player could easily keep up with their practice by simply booting up Melee and playing some unranked for a bit. With this huge blessing, the Melee community was able to survive the pandemic with massive online tournaments like SCL, LACS, and Smash Summit 10, all of which were played online with Slippy. While online tournaments were keeping the game afloat, the community was itching for an in-person tournament. Don't get me wrong, people love the online events. But for some, the online results aren't the real deal. They wanted to settle the score in person. There was one player in particular that everyone was looking out for at an in-person tournament. One many people wrote off during the online era. As a wise man once said though, what's a god to a non-believer? The Clutch God the pop off master the smash player hungriest for victory Hbox beat me at a summit where literally I warmed up for six hours, and right before I said, I saw him eating a fucking slice of pizza, and I'm like, <laughs> and he fucked me up. He didn't even practice. I was like, yeah. oh. playing for four hours. I saw this motherfucker eat a slice of pizza and then fuck me up. Hungrybox is a pro Jigglypuff player that has been active for over a decade. He's best known for two things: his insane comebacks. Oh my god! That was so tricky. As Whoa, oh. the rest or no? Okay, he's still oh, alive. In. Oh, Good shot. Sure. Oh, 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 he's alive. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. he wanted a little too No, hard. and this could be. Oh. The end of and he's even more insane pop offs. Oh, yeah. oh my god, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Good that shit was by HBox. That was. Oh, my shit. god. Well, Hungrybox has been active for many years now. His placements haven't always been the most consistent. Of course, Hungrybox has always been a top player. There's no debating that. What I'm trying to say is that he hasn't always been the top player. For a long time, Hungrybox was amazing, but he wasn't the best. This all changed in 2016 when Hungrybox went on an absolute terror. In the same way that people are currently discussing how to beat Zane, it is actually the same exact way they used to talk about Hungrybox. He was the player you knew you would have to beat at some point in the bracket to take first place at a major or a super major. He was just that good. I'm not even kidding. He was cracked. So good, in fact, that he single-handedly made some players think Puff is the best character in the game. I mean, I'm no pro or anything, but even I know Puff is not the best character. You'd have to be delusional to think that. Hungrybox placed first on the yearly melee rankings three years in a row. An impressive achievement considering the number of pro players he would have to beat consistently for his first place victories. When the pandemic struck, things began to change. It seemed as if Hungrybox went back to his old ways with less first place finishes and losing sets to players that he would normally beat without a problem. Don't misunderstand me or anything, it's not like Hungrybox was getting last place and it was not like he was god awful or anything, but relative to his peak he seemed to be slacking a bit. The explanation that people gave for this change of results was that these tournaments were played online. They weren't the same as an in-person event. People began to argue that HBox would come back in full force once LAN tournaments resumed. I'm gonna be interested to see what happens when like LAN comes back, because right now every, all the HBox fans are holding on to, you know, mm -hmm. it's online, whatever. It's online. <sighs> yeah, like, a lot know. of people are holding on to that. <laughs> but it's like, you watch him play and like, it's just obvious he's not with the current meta, right? Like, he still doesn't even, like, tech chase rest, like, he's just, like, he's always been a sloppy player. All this discourse added more and more to the storylines going into Summit 11. The community began to speculate more and more about how the first in-person tournament would go. Would HBox be able to make a triumphant return, or would the online results mirror the in-person results? What about the other pro players? How would their performance change at the first in-person event in over a year? Speaking of the other pro players... Right. Yeah, that, that's true. Oh! Bad to bad. 
get to four in that. Nice grab, what's he gonna do? Grab the ledge, grab it again. Oh, that's gonna be it. Zayn takes it over. Oh, and the air dodge is not gonna help him do that. Double shine hasn't done that at all. Oh god! Oh, oh down tilt! I mentioned earlier that the community was split on who the number one player in the world was, the two players in contention being Mango and Zane. These two players went back and forth consistently throughout the online era. To be more precise though, their rivalry was really starting to take off right before the pandemic struck. One of the greatest sets in recent history was played between Mango and Zane in October of 2019 at the Big House 9 just a couple months before the COVID outbreak. These two have single-handedly pushed the Mars Spacey meta further than it has ever been pushed before. Both of these players are truly the best to ever do it with their respective characters. While Melee has had the privilege of having many great rivalries over time, I don't think it would be too crazy to say that Mango and Zane is by far the coolest rivalry in the history of the game. Let's see what makes these two stand out as players. Cover the high recovery again. Mango, what is this? What is what this? Is this? Yeah. <laughs> Mango is hands down the most popular melee player, and rightfully so. He's someone who plays with an awesome mix of risk, aggression, and hard reads. Mango has been a pro player since 2007, which is insanely impressive. Melee has evolved so much since then, and most players will not be able to keep up with the game in the same way he did, consistently being top 5 in the world since 2008. Another thing on Mango's resume that is just as impressive is that he's been the best in the world with three different characters. This might not sound all too crazy, but most pro players only stick to their one character, whereas Mango has proven he could be successful with many characters. One of the things I've noticed about Mango that makes him stand out from other pro Fox players is that he is more willing to play at a closer range and he's not afraid to go into attack more often. Take note of the distance IBDW stays out when fighting Zane. He tends to play at a farther distance, on the other side of the stage, safe. Whereas Mango is almost always in striking distance, playing with a lot more risk. Win or lose, Mango is always a joy to watch, as no matter what, you're gonna be on the edge of your seat. One second he looks like he was touched by God to play melee. Oh my god, and people are already cheering for a 4 stock, what a way to start this top 4. Okay. Ooh, you gonna Ooh. stay down with that smash! And, and the next second he looks like a net plate Falco. Now he's four stock to one is what we're yeah. saying. Right. Ooh, we ooh, just ooh, got for Joe. Oh, oh, my geez. goodness. Shivers down. Up until recently, Mango primarily focused on Falco. His fox would only make appearances on occasion, mainly for fighting Hungry Box. To many people's surprise, Mango declared that he would be focusing on Fox at Summon 11. He would only use Falco for fighting Fox or Falcon. This came out of left field as many people were now used to seeing as Falco. At least I was. With all that being said though, regardless of who he's playing, Mango is always a pleasure to watch and he's easily a fan favorite. Many of Melee's greatest sets and plays have featured Mango, which is a testament to the legacy he'll leave behind as a player.
What would Mango be without an equally as impressive rival? The greatest Marth player to ever play the game, Zane. While Zane hasn't been playing the game nearly as long as Mango, his achievements in his relatively short amount of time in the game is absolutely nothing to scoff at. This guy is incredible. Zane started playing the game in 2014 and is already considered to be one of the greatest players to ever touch the game. We can sit here and talk about how impressive Mango is all day, but Zane's meteoric rise is honestly just as crazy in different ways. Zane's first super major win came in his fourth year of competition, when he won Shine 2018, where he had to defeat Hungrybox. Twice. Again, this was the era when Hungrybox was in his prime, and Zane was still an up and comer. Somehow, Zane was able to beat him, not once, but twice to take the tournament. After Shine, Zane continued placing top 5 consistently and as of right now debatably the number 1 player in the world. He not only quickly became the best Marth on the planet, but he has single handedly pushed Marth further than anyone ever has before. Prior to Zane's Marth advancements, Marth was still a great character with lots of great representation, with players like Mewtwo King and Pew Pew Yu, but none of them were able to quite put it all together like Zane did. It always seemed as if the other pro Marth players struggled with certain matchups or mastering certain techniques, but not Zane. But what differentiates him from every other Marth player is his unmatched dedication to the character. Three of the greatest smashers ever, Mewtwo King, PPMD, and even Ken, needed secondaries or other mains at different points in their careers to overcome the standard Sheik, Captain Falcon, and general weird mid-tier shaped roadblocks that Marth mains frequently run into. Zane is the only Marth to be an all-around amazing player in regards to his strong knowledge of matchups and his complete mastery with advanced mark techniques. As an example, there's a technique in the game known as a pivot tipper. If you've seen either Zane or Pew Pew Yu fight Hungrybox, it's likely you've seen it, even if you don't recognize it by name. You see, it's this movement here after Mark throws that leads into a forward smash. It looks simple, right? I won't break it down all the way in this video, but all you need to know is that when Mark is dash dancing, there is a single frame where he enters his standing animation. And on this one frame, Marth can input a forward smash, or technically any other move. Now in real time, look how precise your input has to be. I'll flash the screen green on the one frame where Marth can pivot tipper. Zane is one of the few people on the planet who can reliably pull this technique off. Beyond this technical play though, Zane's Marth is simply a spectacle to watch. It's hard to describe, but every time you see his Marth on screen, it just looks elegant and sharp. No matter what is thrown at him, his Marth always looks composed and seems to have an answer for everything. Whenever he lands a hit, he seamlessly converts it into a kill or a ton of percent. One of the things I love most about watching Zane as a spectator is how he smoothly glides around the level during a match. While I can't say I understand all the intricacies of his movement, you get a sense of purpose at all time with Zane's moves. He does not ever waste the beat. His movements are always composed and confident. It's rare to see Zane go for something crazy. Well, except for this fucking crazy ass up smash. For now, surely he's not gonna live again. He lives surely. again, and he gets the up smash! And look at the pop-up! Mango and Zane wrestled for dominance during the online era. And now with everyone eager for the first in-person tournament, this would be either one of their chances to claim the number one spot from the other. There was another important question in regards to whether or not Mango could win Summit 11 though. Considering Zane's dominance versus Fox, the question on everybody's mind was, could Mango's Fox beat Zane's Marth? Did when it did this month, like I strongly believe, based on everything I've looked at, everyone I talked to, that I think Marth beats Fox. Which matchup is harder for Marth, Fox or Falco? I think it's Fox, but don't tell anyone I said that. I don't get how people say Marth beats Fox when every time you shine him, he's off the level. I don't get it. Or his meds not supposed to fall off. I don't get it. You shine him off the level, then you edge guard him. I don't get it. Does no one know how to edgeguard Marth? Is that the problem? 
But going back to overall same tier win rates and win rates by stages, it's pretty clear that both ways of looking at the subset of data tells us that when we attempt to factor skill level out, Marth has a favorable matchup against Fox. I, I do believe that Fox beats Marth on every stage that is an FD. Uh, however, I do believe the matchup is close enough where you can make an argument for either character. There is so many matches. It's played way more than basically any other matchup than like Fox Fox and Fox Falco, and yet Fox consistently loses. One of the most entertaining matchups in the game, Marth Fox, is also one of the most controversial. For many years, the majority of people considered Fox to be the best character in the game, with no losing matchups. To a lot of players, the worst Fox would have to deal with was an even matchup, but never a losing one. On the other hand, while Marth has always been considered a high tier character, currently ranked second on the most recent tier list, the idea that Marth could beat Fox was downright preposterous. The melee scene looked a lot like some shit out of 1984. If you disagreed with Big Brother and said Marth beats Fox, you would be exiled. Sometime around 2016 though, the conversation began to change. Leffen, who is one of the best Fox mains on the planet, had begun to share his views on the matchup, which was initially met with a lot of skepticism. Over time though, People in the community began to echo Leffen's views, agreeing that Mark does in fact beat Fox. As of right now, people are still divided on the issue, but the general consensus seems that Mark Fox is more or less even, but Mark may have a slight advantage. While discussing theoretical play is just some fun banter, Zane went on an impressive win streak versus Fox. For two years, Zane did not drop a single set against the Fox player. There wasn't a single fox that could reliably give Zane's Marth a problem. In fact, Leffen effectively gave up on the matchup, opting to play Sheik instead, who has a more favorable matchup against Marth. Despite all the pros hopping off the fox train, Mango came to Summit 11 with a point to prove. Out of the pros, Mango was one of the few players who had a tremendous amount of faith in Fox vs Marth. While some pros think heavily about matchups, in some cases even switching characters, multiple times in a single set just to win the staging character counter pick war, Mango's point of view of matchups is completely the opposite. While he acknowledges matchups being relevant to a certain extent, at the end of the day, he feels that melee isn't a game about matchups, it's a game about mix-ups, understanding your opponent, or as he puts it, playing the game. There's a big difference between playing the matchup versus playing the opponent. Mango is always one to fight the player before fighting the character. While this sounds good on paper, Mango's Fox has more or less been on the bench for the last couple of years. And as I just mentioned, Zane's winning streak versus Fox was more impressive than any Snapchat streak I've ever seen. As of 2018, Mango mostly stuck to playing Falco, who is actually considered weaker than Fox against Marth. But Mango has been able to take numerous sets off Zane's Marth with his Falco. For Summit 11, Mango decided it would be his opportunity for his Fox to make a comeback. This seemed out of left field, and as a spectator you have to wonder why Mango would decide to switch from Falco to Fox, you know, if it ain't broke don't fix it. With his Fox being inactive for so long, it wouldn't surprise me if some were pessimistic about how his Fox would perform at his first significant appearance in a couple of years. Despite all of the uncertainty though, Mango stuck to his word, and with that, Smash Summit 11 would begin. Smash Summit 11 would take place from July 15th through July 18th, 2021. The tournament would feature an all-star cast of Melee players. Out of the 16 players at the tournament, these 7 were the ones that had the potential to win it all. While I've gone over Mango, Zane, and Hungrybox, the tournament had some other killer participants. IBDW, the smoothest green fox in the game right now, would have a shot at taking the whole thing as he's been non-stop grinding throughout the pandemic. While he has yet to win a super major, it's only a matter of time I'd say. Amsa, the red Yoshi everyone loves, would be making a huge comeback. His Yoshi is an absolute killer, beating players like Mango and Hungrybox. He's more than capable of making huge upsets on any given day, leaving him a bit of a wild card. Plup, who's mastered the art of the platforms with Sheik, 
would be making an appearance as well. Plup's best win came when he won Genesis 5 over Hungrybox. While Plup was on a bit of a melee break for some time, he looked sharp going into Summit 11. And then of course, there's Wizro. If there was a heart surgeon who played melee, I guarantee you he would play like Wizrobe. No joke, Wizrobe is one of the most precise and calculated Captain Falcon mains of all time. Wizrobe has taken a couple big events, most notably his Smash and Splash 5 victory over Hungrybox. While I named this chapter the 7, it could have easily been called the 8. Leffen, who was initially invited to the tournament, could not make it due to COVID restrictions. Honestly, things could have played out very differently if he showed up. Regardless though, I don't think anyone knew for sure who would win, but most people could safely assume it would be one of these seven I've just mentioned. Smash Summit 11's participants would have to win matches over the course of a couple days. The tournament was structured with the pool phase, a gauntlet phase, and finally, the main bracket. The way this worked is a bit complicated if you're unfamiliar with the format. But to put it simply, your place in the main bracket would be dependent on how well you perform during the pool and gauntlet phase of the tournament. During the pool phase, all of the players in a group of four would have to fight each other. Say you lost all of your matches in the pool and gauntlet phase, this means that you would have to start the main bracket off on the loser side. In a double elimination bracket, this meant that you could only lose once before being knocked out. On the flip side, if you performed well during the pool and gauntlet phase, you would start off on the winner side of the bracket, meaning you would have to lose twice before being knocked out of the tournament. It's a little more complicated than how I just put it, but all you really need to know is that you're rewarded for winning and penalized for losing. With that, the pool and gauntlet phase would kick off Smash Summit 11. Ready? With the gauntlet stage of the tournament complete, the bracket looked more or less in line with what was expected. The seven players who were considered likely to take the tournament were in the winner side of the bracket. At this point, the title of first place was anyone's game. Mango's first opponent in the bracket was Plup. Mango's record against Plup going into the set was 16 to seven. Although many would look at this stat and think Mango has got this set in the bag, whenever these two play, it is always remarkably close. A lot of the time, Mango just barely clutches out the victory. Sheik's last is really good. Five. Mango fans are sitting on the edge of their seat right now. I think so are Plup fans. Okay, Scar. <sighs> the the short... Mitchell, everybody tournament winner! Oh, I've seen so many of those from He's got to go Hive. Oh, this is oh, how he turns it, it on. He's turning it on. Oh! 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 Yes! Oh, my yes! God! God! Holy There's crap! No way! At Smash Summit 11, it would be no different these players would have another intense set. Once again, another match that could potentially be Grand Finals. We uh, really could. Yeah, Plub hey. has been hot lately. Hey, Bobby, where have we seen uh, Mango's Fox against Plub Sheik before? Yeah, I, don't, I can't really say who feels like the favorite if, when they face off either. Sometimes it feels like it's Plup. By Plup. We're here into game two. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. 
<laughs> because even Zane, a little afraid of playing Plub. It's so dangerous playing this guy first round. Mango bringing the fight to Plub. Just relentless with these drills. Oh. Look at Plub, oh my goodness. Just uh, doesn't seem to be like phased by anything. Yeah. One Long last stock here in the winner's bracket. Crow is in right now. Mangle with barely a shield. Oh. He misses a wave dash. A grow? He makes up a wave. Oh. Living? He doesn't living. even go for dash attack because he knows the power is too high. One last chance. He's still living. Oh, oh. no, and he's too and far away. Short. Wow. Three, one, Plub. 3-1 Plup. With Mango losing to Plup, he would now be in the loser side of the bracket, meaning if he lost one more set, he would be out of the tournament. If the stakes weren't high enough already, Mango would have to win 7 sets in a row if he had any hopes of taking the tournament still. On the flip side of things, Zayn was looking completely untouchable this tournament. His first opponent in the bracket would be Kadorn, the second best Marth main on the planet. If there's one thing that Zayn proved during this set, it was that the gap between himself and the second best Marth on the planet was astronomical. And you actually go like up diagonally through, through the stage. Oh, that's, that's you. Yeah, that's and I named it oh, stage wow. <laughs> Did you see that? Uh... That forward air just destroy Kadoran's Nair in place. Kadoran just Nair'd him. Oh, <laughs> play aggressive! Oh, oh and, no! And he jumped to her. Oh, no. wow. Man. Taking Zane to the limit on that game three. That De was well played. Yeah. Definitely had a chance. Yeah. He Definitely had a chance. After defeating Kadoran, Zane's next opponent would be Plup. It seemed as if Plup was playing hot coming off his win against Mango. I honestly had no clue who would win the set, to be honest. But just like with Kadorn, Zane looked completely unbeatable. Despite looking so good in his set versus Mango, it was clear that Zane was on a completely different tier. With this win over Plup, Zane would secure himself a spot in winner's finals. This meant a guaranteed top 3 finish for him. Out of the rest of the 7, to everyone's surprise it was Hungrybox to meet Zane in winner's finals. Hungrybox had to defeat both IBDW and Omsa to make it a winner's finals, both of which could have easily taken the whole tournament. While his set versus Amsa was a nail biter, it was his set versus IBDW that was the most surprising. In Chapter 2, I mentioned how a lot of people excuse Hungrybox's recent results due to tournaments being held online. The one player in particular who seemed to be giving Hungrybox the most trouble online was IBDW. I do. IBDW 10 and 2 over Hungrybox wow. in the rollback era. 
Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty dominant. Yeah. During their last seven online sets, IBDW won every single one of them. While some of the sets were closer than others, it seemed as if IBDW had figured out Hungrybox. With this being the first in-person tournament, it could have been the nerves or simply Hungrybox's veteran status, but he beat IBDW in a convincing 3-1 set. This set up Zane vs Hungrybox winners finals, meaning that the top 3 would now consist of Hungrybox, Zane, and whoever climbed up the losers bracket. Much like with IBDW, Zane had been all over Hungrybox during the online era. Hungrybox did not take a single set off of Zane for a year and a half, not since 2019. Well, coming off his IBDW victory, if it were to happen at any event, it would be this one. Hbox is coming right out of my way of toe, but there's one more wow. rust. That was kind of the narrative. It's like Hbox right. is, you know, streaming, entertaining, but not grinding right. melee. Yep. His oh, opponents made some mistakes. What a split punish! Yeah. <laughs> That's a no! Oh. He misses the rest! Oh, this could be a huge turn of fate oh. for Zane. Yeah. That's it's basically fun. a two-stock swing yes, on a missed that's rest a there. Yes, colossal swing. That's oh, incredible. Oh my incredible. goodness! Triple down air. His last stock of the winner's bracket. Oh. Attack! Oh, 7%! Seven. Seven. Here we go, last stock. Will we see a game five? This is the scariest hungry box. <laughs> Wow! What a set! That looked like the exact same Tipper Ford Smash, by the way. I was not sure that was going to KO. Now on the winner's side of Grand Finals, Zane would be assured a top 2 finish at Smash Summit 11. Since he came from the winner's side, the opponent coming from the loser's side would have to beat him in two consecutive sets to win the tournament. Out of the seven, only Zane made it out on top. The rest of the seven would have to duke it out on the loser side of the bracket. For Mango, his loser's run would have to be long and grueling. Losing to Plup sends him to round two of losers, which meant that if he had any hopes of winning the tournament, he would have to win seven long sets ahead of him. Of the seven sets, five of them would have to be against one of the seven, and one of them would have to be against Plup, meaning he would have to win the run back. With this being the first in-person tournament since the pandemic, with it being the largest pot in Melee history, and with Mango focusing on his Fox for the first time in ages, and with him having to defeat Zane twice, the odds looked impossible. But as the legendary homemade waffles put it, I mean, pressure yeah. makes diamonds, Bobby. Wow. Use this move. Oh, 
move out of oh. Oh. nowhere. Oh my god. Not bad. Keep it, keep it. I don't think Mango is done at Smash Summit 11 here. No, no. it does not look good. Like We're seeing Mango somehow defying all expectations. All I know is that Mango came to play, and I am not sure if Club can cool him down. Mango versus Hungrybox in 2021. Yeah, is... Hungrybox has gotten a big bump from, yeah, from online, online to land. Yeah. Right. Online, you know, era that we just had, uh, Mango and Zane seem to just be a, a step above everyone else. Beautiful look like that. Oh, ooh, two nares. That's nares. a lot of damage. Slight bit of offense. Oh, oh my god. Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, Oh, oh my goodness, somehow wow. Mango taking that game from H Box. Oh my goodness. Holy. It's a Mango Zane grand final. Yeah. It's a Mango it's Zane grand final. Hungry Box is climbing. Oh, He's climbing up. He's bringing it back. You know, this is something we're, we're remarking on. Obviously, the narrative through the pandemic or whatever is like, oh, is H Box like, is he washed? What's going on? And yeah. you look, I would say, amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. I would say it looks like you never left. But it's not really the monitor versus CRT thing. It's just the online versus in-person thing. Yeah. That's right. the dynamic that's way different. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very different. Um, but, uh, you know, we, me and Mango have traded sets for so long now. But, you know, obviously, clearly, he's put a lot more time into the game currently than I have. Um, but I have no doubt in my mind that the fire is back, for me at least. That's <laughs> awesome to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So you cool. will be seeing me. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Then it comes game time with Zane. This is it. And I'm thinking at this point, my Fox is playing fucking dope. I'm like, it's Fox. It's Fox Marf time. I said, fuck it. That I think Marth beats Fox. Amazing this, this, this is the box. way it should be. This is the way it should be. <laughs> These are the... Uh, Two best players in the studio right now, and that's what Grand Final should have. Guys, Aiden has closed Maybe the door. Fire too, so. Aiden has closed wow. the door, and I think our Two players, players are locked in here. Oh, yeah, they locked One in. Ready to go. That sure. Mango never yeah. winning a Smash Summit, which is kind of crazy. Just like what tennis is like, not uh, winning like a was like a Wimbledon. Or yeah, Wimbledon something like that. that. Yeah. Mango yeah. over yeah. ten. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. we couldn't have asked for a better match to represent the game that we have loved for the last twenty years. Absolutely. Invisible hands are behind you just now If you ever win that race against beach Then you became close, it's no man's land Masters in heavy rain, ultimate with fame Make shouts late, what they've done is in vain Killing AK-47, 24-7 But you got 11, persecuted by heaven Comes from the direction, no indication You've got to, to let it move first Let it out, let it down, let it inside Let it loose, let it, let it in, depressed Let's get it up, then what you gonna lose Drop a hammer down, drop rhyme, drop hammer Take it like a lever, you got blood all over Bash all over
Oh my goodness! Looks up at the ceiling. I wish y'all could see the crowd forming. Everyone in the venue watching this set, yeah. all at the main TV. What I don't think that we're gonna go to. There's no way that we go to a reset. Flash is a big house nine, but let's not speak too soon. Can Mango win twice on Final D versus uh -oh. What? Oh. From Mango. Oh yo, oh my yo, he's God. cooking. He's cooking. Oh my he's goodness. cooking. Just listen to Brandon. This tournament was fucking nuts. There's really no other way to putting it. It was fucking insane. Mango vs Zane at Smash Summit 11 was an instant classic for Melee players, and the Smash community as a whole. Against all odds, Mango was able to climb up from the losers bracket and beat Zane in a reverse 3-0, and then won a second set to win the biggest Melee tournament of all time. An incredible tournament no matter how you slice it. Did Smash Summit 11 give answers to all the questions the community had? Fuck no. We still have no idea who is the best player online or offline. We still have no idea if Fox beats Marth. And we still have no fucking clue who Nick Yingling is. But this tournament is important because I think it reminded everyone just how sick Melee is after a very long year with no tournaments. Smash Summit 11 kicked off LAN events with one of the best tournaments you could ask for as a Melee fan. While this video is called the greatest story in Melee history, the great thing about Melee is that I'm sure one day, maybe a year from now, maybe 10 years from now, there will be a new story even greater than this one. That's just how it goes with Melee. Alright, this is 